I'm Robert Ray with MP3 Car, and I'm here with Jonathan Garcia from Magden. And uh, Magden's built a, a uh, computer that uh, does a bunch of interesting things with reading data from the car. So maybe you can give us a quick overview of what the software does and uh, give us a quick demo. Absolutely, Robert. What we have here is the M1B Performance Computer. And what it does is it connects to the vehicle's OBD2 connector, takes the data from the vehicle and displays it to any kind of video screen you have or want to get. For example, an LC, uh, LCD screens that might be in the car already that have composite video input or aftermarket radios like Alpine or Pioneer, Kenwood, Sony, they have video input or even touch screens that are VGA connections. We can work with those too so you can see the data on the screen. It gives the customer a new way to add gauges inside the vehicle without having to physically mount, drill holes, cut wires, do all that hard labor to get gauges in the car. Now you just plug this into the OBD2 connector and you get the gauges on the screen. Okay. So why don't you give us a quick tour of uh, what some of the features are? Absolutely. The Magden software, you, you don't actually buy the software, you buy a whole package. You get a black box and you get the software pre-bundled into one. And I understand it runs on Linux. Maybe you can tell us a little bit else, uh, a little bit more about the box itself. Absolutely. The M1B Performance Computer has uh, various outputs for video signals, like I explained earlier. But here they are. They have uh, VGA uh -huh. output here, S video, composite video. Um, it even has a spot for a, a video card upgrade if you want DVI or LVDS, um, if you want that interface. Uh, it has the port for the OBD2 connector there two USBs, and of course with USB you can just run a hub to anywhere in the vehicle and use that as your interface for um, either upgrading the software, downloading, and then uploading to the M1B. Um, it's also used for data logging the information of, of the vehicle. So we write to the USB stick, which we include a one gig stick in the package um, to hold all the information that you want to record. Uh, you can use any USB stick, as large as you want. A lot of the performance enthusiasts want they, they come and ask, oh, well, how much data logging is there? Because they're used to right. embedded hardware only having so much size. This allows you to data log So as we get all the want. data logging on a USB stick. Can I take that into my, my desktop PC and read it on my desktop PC? Absolutely. It's saved as a CSV file on okay. the USB, so you can open in Excel or whatever uh, graphing software program you want to use. Um, we also have uh, some speaker uh, inputs and a mic input and output. Um, that's for future expansion. Uh, we have some features that are coming out later that you'll be able to download off the website and utilize these additional ports. Great. Well, let's get into the user interface. Absolutely. So what you have here is, are the five gauges um, that are coming from the vehicle's OBD2 system. Um, the user interface allows you to select any gauge you want in any position you want. So for this one, I want to change it to RPM, and there you have RPM instantly. You can go to any one of these gauges, and you'll see what's available on the vehicle, and you can select what you want and put it there. On top of that, uh, you can also have your choice of skins. You tap outside the gauge area, select skin, and you can see all these choices. So I can change it to blue glow. Get a total different customized feel for the user just by selecting the skins or even changing the layout. So now that was sequence and this is called data lab. Mm -hmm. So we present the data in another fashion here. Horizontal, right. left to right gauges, and again, you tap on the gauge and you can select what you want to see in that spot. When we, when we introduced this to the market, we also felt that we needed to give them, of course, the traditional style gauges. Some people are not used to seeing data in, in foreign ways, so it's a way to kind of break them into seeing it okay, here's your traditional gauge, but you can also have some other exciting flavors, if you will. And in, in addition to that, you can change the indicator color. So those needles now can go to white, and the text can now change to whatever you like. This is just the tip of the iceberg. What we're looking to do is just do software releases that people can download off our website or other partners' websites and get different colors, uh, different layouts, different skins that we'll be releasing. Um, we're looking to also do things where we get the community involved. We want to let people kind of design their own gauges in the future. So first steps will be, here's the template, choose your own colors, mm -hmm. save the file, upload it back to your M1B, and now you have your own personalized gauge set that you design. Right. And then further down the road, 
even expand and open that a little bit more uh, to the community so they can design their own gauges. So you mentioned community. So a lot of our community ha already have PCs and monitors installed in their car. A lot of them are actually using Linux. Uh, I understand you can only buy the black box now. Do you have a forecast of when you might be able to buy the software yourself well, and, and install that yourself? That's a good question. Uh, we want to get the feedback from the different communities out there and see if that would be the best thing to do or not. Um, the, the M1B is actually, it actually consists of off-the-shelf parts except for one proprietary card that we manufacture and that's the card that reads the data from the vehicle. So it knows what kind of vehicle and the data that's coming from it. So you really can't do it just with off-the-shelf parts. You do need one more piece of hardware that's translating the vehicle data into something where you can use it. So where does your piece of hardware connect in here? Because we've got the serial port, right? And that's going to be your OBD2 connector. Is there another interface to the, to the engine other than the OBD2 connector? Uh, right now, no. It's just straight from the OBD2 connector. That goes inside uh, the box to our piece of hardware, then to the rest of the platform, which is So you have a piece of hardware in between the serial port and the motherboard that, yes. that translates the serial data? Right. That, that's what we need to do that in order to identify the different types of vehicles because um, it works on vehicles from 96 to current. Okay. Anything with OBD2. Mm -hmm. So we can plug into a Honda, we can plug into a Mustang, we can plug into a Toyota, right. a Ford, Chevy, you right. name it. Right. Um, all those different systems. And, and what it has to do is that it has to identify mm -hmm. what the protocol is on the vehicle. Right. So older vehicles could be J1850 protocol right. or ISO. Um, one thing that's been uh, a, a good indicator of the industry uh, moving forward is that all vehicles from 08 forward are on the CAN system. Okay. So that's kind of universal and makes things a little bit easier. Right, so if you did release, you'd have to release this little translator device as well as the software. And, right. and when do you think that, like you said you wanted to, to gauge the interest in the community, is that what you're? Yeah, yeah, we want to see, uh, we want to see what kind of feedback we get from the people that want to do it themselves like that. But we have so much interest in the performance market where they're going to utilize this um, as the base platform because we have a lot of things that are coming out okay. that can be upgraded. Right. Um, so your goal is to get the performance market to use it for a while, get it get it in a usable condition, and then release it to the communities and the hobbyists? Oh, uh, we don't know yet. Okay. We haven't made that decision. But uh, when you do look at the cost of it, because it retails only for six forty nine, mm -hmm. um, if you were actually to go buy the parts and source out a case and everything you probably spend more money or a lot more time trying to put it together yourself. Right. Um, so it, it that was one of our reasons for pricing it at six forty nine retail, just because it's it's not really about you know you need to right. spend a billion dollars on hardware. It's right. all about our software. Right. Right. So we, you know what? It's pretty easy just to buy that and go forward from it. And it's, especially with a lot of things that we have planned, future integrations of other hardware. Well, thanks a lot for your time today. I appreciate the uh, the demo. Absolutely. Thanks, Rob.